Hello everyone, this is Mr. Matthew here, and I'm going to talk about how global patterns determine the distribution of life in the biosphere. This is, this is Learning Objective 1-1 in Honors Biology, so Unit 1, first section or first theme. In this video, I'm going to talk about how we have four seasons or why we have four seasons. I'm going to next describe how the Earth's tilt leads to uneven heating of the Earth's surface. Uh, we're then going to evaluate how that uneven heating drives the patterns of air and water circulation on the planet. And then last, we're going to be able to determine the biome of a given location on the globe based on the temperature and precipitation patterns of that location. And so here we go. So let's start right here. And before I get into it, I'd like you to pause and think for a minute. Why do we have four seasons? So take a moment and think, what causes or what's the most important thing that leads to our seasons? All right, so hopefully you paused the video for a second and gave yourself 30 or so seconds to think about it. And now you're back. And I'm going to tell you that the biggest things that we're going to see as um, contributing factors for what leads to the four seasons is the location of the earth that we're looking at, the tilt of the earth, and the rotation of the earth around the sun. And so what we see here in this diagram is the sun, obviously not drawn to scale, is in the middle of this diagram, and then we show the location of the earth in four places at the four different types of seasons. So we'll start at the the center um, of this diagram in the back drawing where we see that it is spring in the northern hemisphere and autumn in the southern hemisphere. At this point you'll see the location of the equator and the equator is basically um, going to have an even amount of light being struck above and below the equator. So we're having roughly even heating by the sun to both the northern and the southern hemisphere. As we follow the arrows around what we'll see is that the uh, next place, which is on the far left of this diagram, the light is striking much more directly in the northern hemisphere. So at this time, we are going to see summer in the northern hemisphere because the tilt of the Earth combined with the direct sunlight and the mot motion of the Earth around the sun is leading to more intense or more direct light to the northern hemisphere and less direct light to the southern hemisphere. This creates summer in the northern hemisphere and winter in the southern hemisphere. As we continue to follow the arrows, we will move towards uh, the diagram closest to us on in the center. And this again is going to be a mirror of what we saw on the top of the diagram. So we're seeing equal distribution of light above and below the equator. And so now we are autumn in the northern hemisphere and spring in the southern hemisphere. And lastly, lastly, we move over to the right and we see that it is now going to be more direct sunlight striking below the equator, so in the southern hemisphere. And this is going to be summer in the southern hemisphere and less direct sunlight striking the northern hemisphere. So what we see here in this diagram is that um, the location of the equator is going to dictate um, basically which area, northern or summer, southern hemisphere, is getting the most uh, direct sunlight. And so what we see is this tilt. So if you take a moment and think, in this picture, what would be the best way of describing the seasons? So take a moment, pause and think. And hopefully what you noticed is that based off of that previous image that we went over, we're seeing more direct sunlight in the southern hemisphere, less direct light in the northern hemisphere. And so this would represent summer in the southern hemisphere and winter in the northern hemisphere. Now, regardless of what the season is, you can notice that the arrows that are going from the sun to the earth are striking most directly towards the middle of the planet. And so as a result of this, what we're going to find is that, generally speaking, closer to the equator at all times of the year are getting the most direct sunlight. And at the poles, you are always getting the less direct sunlight. Uh, now, obviously, in the winter, 
pole, you are getting the least amount of sunlight. And this is what's going to lead to, you know, near 24 hours of darkness at the North Pole. And you're going to get um, fairly constant low grade light in the Southern Hemisphere in this particular case at the South Pole. But still, the intensity of that light is very, very low. Now, when we combine that that intensity, what we get is that it's going to lead to certain areas getting very, very warm. So right now we can look at this particular diagram and see that at the equator, we're going to ha get a lot of sunlight striking the equator. That um, air is going to rise and this is going to lead to very warm, moist air rising at the equator. Regardless of the season, this is going to occur. Now, as that air rises, it's full of moisture, and that moisture is then going to condense and fall. And so as a result, what we find is that pretty much at the equator, we find tropical rainforests. As the air moves away towards cooler areas, it is getting cooler and drier. And what we find is that at 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south of the equator, we tend to have cool, dry air falling towards the earth. Now, this is not necessarily cold, but it's certainly much cooler than the air that we had. And as a result of cool, dry air descending, we tend to find deserts at 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south. So here what we find is that in this particular diagram, we are showing um, Africa and we see that at the equator, we have this lush green area, which would represent a tropical rainforest. And at 30 degrees north, we find a, a very arid area, which would be the northern end of the Sahara Desert. And this is a circulation cell that we have as a result of this. And you can see that by this red arrow here, this is a circulation cell. Now, in addition to this, we will have the Earth spinning. And so what we'll see is that the air and wind currents that are uh, moving around the Earth, specifically the air currents that are driving around that you see here labeled as uh, southeasterlies and westerlies, um, these are also going to have a curve to them. And if we look at ocean currents, we will see that they curve both because of the rotation of the Earth and the location of the continents. Uh, you don't need to know the names of the uh, the trade winds or the westerlies or the southeasterlies, but to know that not only does the indirect heating of uh, the Earth contribute to the motion of air and water, but also the rotation of the Earth will contribute to how how global air and wind patterns will uh, be impacted. That's the, the take home. So when we put this all together, what we end up finding is that as a result of this uneven heating on the earth and the location uh, relative to the equator of different land masses, we find different biomes in different locations. So as I mentioned on the previous slide, we tend to find tropical rainforests in equatorial regions because of the warm moist air rising and then the precipitation occurring there. And so we have sort of constant rainfall in these areas. And I can highlight um, these areas in South America and in Africa and then in um, these island regions down here in Southeast Asia. These are areas of tropical rainforest. We also find 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south. We tend to find uh, deserts. We'll also have other factors including elevation that will play a con a key role here um, when we look at uh, whether or not you would have um, certain temperatures. So for example, we often find that along the Andes Mountains or in the um, Himalayas, we tend to find uh, these arid regions that seem very Arctic, even though they are not near the Arctic, but because of the high elevation, we tend to find tundra-like conditions. Now, when we are able to put all of this together, we are then able to look at uh, the seasons and we look at the 12 months out of the year and we can look at conditions and decide based off of the temperature and precipitation, what type of biome do we have? And so, for example, if we look over at this diagram here that is a uh, climatogram of Hanoi, we will see that there is a very, very high amount of uh, rainfall and a very warm temperature. And so the question is, where do we think on the globe you would find Hanoi? And 
if you know your geography and you know your history, um, you know that Hanoi is in Southeast Asia. And this is a rain pattern where we have a rainy season and a high temperature. And so Hanoi is in what we would call in a tropical rainforest. We'll practice this in class. Um, I will also put a link to the Great Graph Challenge. If you would like to test out your biome knowledge and your climatogram knowledge, you can check it out here at the Great Graph Challenge. All right, so I hope that helps you with an understanding of how uh, the global patterns lead to the distribution of life on Earth. And I will be back to talk to you soon.